Hi folks, welcome to the first Wednesday widget really from the new shop. It's awesome. A few months ago, a fellow named Graham from Diode Press reached out to us. He needed a new way to make his prints. And what happened is amazing. And I said, hey, let me help you with this. Would you be willing to make a Saunders Machine Works artistic you know, print or something? Thinking, I was thinking something relatively small. Well, Graham knocked it out of the park and I really appreciate it. And at the end of this video, we've got some really cool footage of his project and what he did. But the task at hand is to make this rocker arm a little bit more flexible for him. So the requests are to allow him to use wooden dowels and he can get more easily, interchange them, and then have a mechanism that holds the adapter plate and the actual rocker piece to, again, different size dowels with different size weights on the end. So we're gonna use Fusion 360 to create the CAD. Some good new stuff and tricks I'm still learning as well. Fusion 360 to create the cam, no problem there, and then the Tormach to machine an aluminum adapter, which I think will do the trick. Let's dive in. Start with a two-point rectangle. We could click on it, but Fusion 360, thank God, finally released keyboard shortcuts. They're good, uh, they're not great. I, I want more and I'll, I'm gonna push them for more. But so if we hit the R key, that pops that up. We'll click on this plane and drag, and we're gonna do two point, uh, let's see here, actually. 1.25 by 2.5, enter. And we get our 2D sketch. Keyboard shortcut Q, press pulls, click on that, and we'll type one inch. Now we need a couple holes that we're gonna use for our, the bolts through the um, rocker piece itself. So click on, click on C for center diameter circle, and we'll click on this face here. And we'll just go up here and sketch a .201 hole. We've got one. Now I want those 1.76 inches apart and I want them on center. So let's try this a different way. We're gonna see again and we're gonna sketch another circle. Two point, or sorry, point, oops. C .201, enter. Now we're gonna click the center dot here, hold down control, center dot there, and choose horizontal vertical. Great, now those two are always in line. Now what we wanna do is dimension them, actually, what's the keyboard shortcut for dimension? D. There we go, oh, I didn't work for. And we'll say 1.76, perfect. And, but again, we want them centered, and I don't want to do the math because I want to have it as parametric CAD. So let's see here. If we hit L for line, that was actually a guess, and we sketch a line down here and change it, hit select, click the line, and change it to construction. Let's see if we can do symmetrical, symmetry. Click on there, hold down control, click there, <laughs> Awesome. Now, no matter what the, the you know, we change this, uh, let's see here, we change this to 1.25, they stay symmetrical. Awesome. Exactly what I wanted. We want to extrude, so let's hit E. We'll click on this and that, and I'll type negative one, and that gives me all the way through. Perfect. Those are gonna be threaded, that's why I, a quarter 20, which is why I did them as 0.201. We're gonna counter bore them so that you don't have that full length thread because it's not necessary. So again, center diameter circle, click here, and I'll see how it turns to a circle, which snaps it to 0.3, and then again, E for extrude, click this, negative 0.625, perfect. Now another way we can do this, again, we're just having fun, construct, mid-plane, choose this, choose that. That gives us a, this plane here in the center of our part. And now we can do create mirror. Now this threw me at first. What I did was click here and then the mirror plane of here, and it's gonna give us an error. And I, I don't like this, um, uh, but I'm not sure whether it's me or fusion. But what you've gotta do is mirror both the side wall and the floor, which I can't do for some reason here. There we go. Click there. Hold down control. Sorry. Duh. Now that works, which is a which is very valuable because again, by mirroring it, we're retaining some more parametric functionality. 
the dowel is going to go into a center one inch hole so we can snap it to center you know one of the things I like about SolidWorks that Fusion doesn't seem to do is if you um, if you sna let it snap here just not actually clicking but just recognize the mouse point and there when you drag over it'll snap at the intersection it's not doing that here so we'll just click here we're going to dimension it tenth out over that way there's just a hair of cushion and then L for line oops 1.01 .01. for line we'll do one right here we'll change it to construction and then what we can do is click here and here holding it out in control sorry between those two and just click midpoint E for extrude stop sketch sorry E for extrude click that negative point uh, let's see here eight seven five or something we just need to add a hole in the top it's going to be for a thumb screw that will pinch the dowel rod into the block here so C for center diameter circle click the top face and again over here we can snap it this way 0.201 and I'll hit D for, oops 0.201 D for dimension here to here we'll say 0.875 divided by 2 which puts it you know about in the center or it should be actually in the center of the depth and E for extrude and this time I just like to drag down sometimes it's just easier and now we've got our hole in the top now one of the things that I'm still getting used to with Fusion is, is assemblies and joints and mates and so forth. So let's talk a little bit about that. First off, we've got this plane here that I don't really want to see, and that will highlight this area over here on the left. But we don't need to see that, so we can toggle that off with the light bulb. What we've got now, bodies, sketches, and construction. So bodies are what we care about here. So this right now, this block is a body but we're going to add in some new components like that dowel rod and that's an actual discrete component in the real world it's a separate part so that's a component this block is going to be a component so we don't want to leave it as a body so we're going to right click and say create components from bodies and now we have this other thing here called a component great now let's create that dowel rod but you don't want it to be part of component one which we're going to rename aluminum aluminum block so the only way I know to do this, probably a better way, is we'll create a sketch and we'll just choose a new plane. And then we can sketch it over here. We'll say one inch, enter, extrude this to 10 inches. By the way, you can see how the fast, you can see how much faster keyboard shortcuts are making Fusion. So good. Now to make these two together, uh, one of them needs to be grounded and Actually, first we want to make this so you see bodies came back. So we've got this body, oops, and the so we'll right click, create component, and we'll call this dowel. So we've got a dowel and we've got a block. If we, um, I think we can right click and ground. So that'll lock that one in place or fix it in place. And this one, this one we can move around. So we'll do a assemble joint. We'll click this edge and then we'll click that edge and it's going to give us a rigid that's fine so now we've got these two things what's different in SolidWorks you have individual part files and then you have an assembly that's no longer the case here and you can turn off one or the other good now let's import the uh, wedge shaped object so we'll go to our data panel double click this thing and it opens up here well, that's not what we wanted so close this right click and say insert into current design hopefully that works okay it did so move you can drag this around let's just leave it here for now and see if we can fix it with joints so we'll do mm, assemble joint we'll click on that and we'll click on that looks good except I want it flipped around but let's so we need to actually flip it there we go that's good now it sh now why are there two of them oh, that's why and you can see it's actually mounted incorrectly there so 
we'll go to joint and edit joint. You know what, let's just delete it and redo it. Assemble, continue. So we'll click, we'll click this side and then we'll click there. So opposite way, let's flip it. And now I got what I want. Click OK. And because it was a rigid joint and not a circular or a round um, rotating joint, it actually locks it in place, which is perfect. And then uh, there is a weight that goes on the end, which we can also import. And same thing. Assemble. Click here and click here. So here's the final part in design and assembly. Not the craziest thing in the world, but one of the takeaways is folks, don't over-engineer it. You know, I know the cooler the parts I make, the maybe the better the videos will be, but at the end of the day, what we're trying to do here is help Graham uh, solve his needs for diode press. And he wants something that's light or weight, something that's more versatile, he can travel with it, he doesn't have to use pipe fittings that are heavier. And I think there's an element of fatigue because folks, he spends hours using this thing. So I'm really hoping that this is going to do the trick for him. Uh, let's, uh, oh, the, and I think, uh, I know I learned a few things banging through some of the Fusion 360 assembly joint type stuff, which more to come. We've got a really fun project uh, that I'm working on. It's actually been really challenging for me uh, that's going to combine a lot of that Fusion stuff. So, so stay tuned and subscribe if you want to see that. Now let's dive into the cam. <laughs>